Hello, I'm Judd Matheny. I'm your mayor here in Coffee County, and uh, this is the first episode of a podcast that I would like to launch every week. We hope to put them up on Monday afternoons. So, yes, there's going to be some editing, but I'm also going to make some verbal mistakes probably, and as long as they're not going to uh, get me kicked out of office or something like that, I will uh, roll on with them. Um, so, you know, no curse or anything like that. But if I stumble or something, we may roll right through these. These are live. Uh, it's a discussion between myself and you. And what I really want this to be, it's just like the name says. It's Judd Matheny, Coffee County Mayor. It's the mayor's message. There's so much going on in your county that to be able to explain it to you at dinner or breakfast one morning or at a county commission meeting would be almost impossible. But by uh, us talking about it a little bit at a time and then giving you some ways to to provide me with some feedback is going to be a big help. So I just want to welcome everybody, let you know that uh, I have a gentleman behind the camera, Philip Scoggins, that I trust greatly, that's going to be uh, working on these and uh, doing some graphics with us. And we, we may go travel around the county and, and visit some of our buildings and department heads in future episodes and, and uh, get you out of this office uh, for sure, because I like to be out of this office out working. Um, we have been uh, sworn in September 1st, so we got September, October, November, December, seven months in, and uh, the Coffee County is on very solid footing. Uh, we've got about uh, 88 to 90 million dollar budget this year. Our revenues, uh, at first, we thought were around 84 million, but now it looks like we're going to have the recurring revenue uh, that we need to, to take care of our budget, as well as some some extra one-time money that we're going to need to make some improvements. And I'll talk about that as we get down here and some of the projects that we have going on. Um, What's happened in the last seven months is we've put together a great county commission. Please, I encourage you to go out and meet with your county commissioners. We have 18, two in each of the nine super districts, and they're great people. We have a great working relationship, and I sort of think of myself as the 19th commissioner quite often because I my, my background's in the legislative business, and, and I totally respect their viewpoint and, and get it and uh, want to help them be the best that they can be. So meet your commissioners if you haven't. We've put together a great commission, a great group of uh, committees that are looking at things objectively that are that are counties dealing with and some of them are, are brand new and and some of them are, are extraordinary we've we have some opportunities coming here that the county hasn't seen in in 80 years 80 plus years with adc being probably the last big one that came in um, our budget process is beginning now our budget director marianna edinger who i'm sure you'll meet on the episode has sent the budget packets out to the department heads as they're coming in, I'm going to review them. We're going to make sure that they're all congruent and that there's no, uh, you know, n no department heads or have different uh, methodologies of figuring out their budgets. I want them all to be the same. And uh, then we're going to put together a budget that we can present to the com commission and the various committees for their consideration and possible amendments. And we'll do all that in, in the public eye also. I anticipate sometime in March having a public meeting where we'll read the budget um, as its initial form is in public to the public at a work session. Um, I mentioned growth opportunities that are coming to Coffee County. We have a... Uh, what. Uh, I would call a mega site. I helped build five of these when I was a state representative for 16 years. And when I say I helped build five, I did everything from site visits to voting for the monies, uh, meeting, sitting in the negotiations with the corporate heads for the lands and the local governments and, and watched how a mega site is built. Um, I'm very confident that the state of Tennessee will buy a good portion, if not all, of about 2,000 acres here about a mile north of Manchester and put it in its inventory for future use. We don't know what that means. Uh, most likely it's going to be some type of industrial site in the future. There's been about a million dollars now spent on that uh, land by the state and the federal government for due diligence, uh, you know, wetland delineation, where we're we going to put power lines. Um, where we're going to have some protected species and, and need to avoid them. There's been a lot of gravel put down um, so that uh, engineers and surveyors could get around. And it's a beautiful piece of land. And we have three families that own it, and they've all been very cooperative um, with us and with the state and the industrial board. They want that land to be left as a legacy to this county as a major wealth and job creator. And I applaud them for that because that is our objective at some point to 
to uh, to be the greatest unused economic engine that the state of Tennessee has right now, and it's here in Coffee County, and it is realized the governor has put money uh, to buy it in his budget. So um, there's still some negotiations going on, but there's a substantial amount of money in the budget that I think it shows the governor's very serious. Um, well, highway expansion, there's, there's not only do we feel a lot happening here, not only do you see a lot going on in your urban growth boundaries and it's your zoning and your planning commission meetings and your, your board of mayor and alder meetings and your commission meetings, there's so many subdivisions coming online, so many people moving here, there's so many houses that are selling so fast that the state and the federal government also notice this. Uh, we have several highway expansion projects that are underway. We have some major intersection improvements, um, some that are completed, some that are underway. You've seen the large one uh, here in Manchester at 41 and 55. It takes uh, a little while to get used to, maybe with the blinking yellow lights and the left turns and all that, but it seems to, to be functioning uh, much better and much more smoothly, less congestion. The same thing's happening in a major intersection in Tullahoma. just so happens that uh, our county health department in Tullahoma is going to lose about two-thirds of its parking lot and its available space to conduct business. And um, our Manchester one we just closed due to the fact that it can, it's just too aged to continue to put money in it to update it. So we are consolidating our health departments. And the previous administration decided to put uh, the new health department in the Coffee County Joint Industrial Park. So we're working to make sure that we build the best one that we can. We have all the monies available, both through state grants, ARPA money that came down from the federal government through the, through the uh, American Recovery and Relief Act, and then we also have some direct appropriations that we're putting in. The sale of the Manchester Health Department building and the sale of the parking lot to TDOT in Tullahoma um, from our existing health department are also going to that. So. Uh, I don't want everybody's eyes to glaze over, but our health department is going to be built. We're going to have a brand new one. It's going to be in the Joint Industrial Park, and it's probably going to be completed within three to four years. And in the meantime, we're all going to be using Tullahoma, and I'm going to have some extra parking spaces built around the back, an extra 10 to make up for what we've lost. Uh, so the highway improvements will affect the uh, health department that way with that new intersection. We have the Highway 41 that is going to be expanded at from uh, basically from Walmart and Manchester out to ADC Highway. That timeline is four to five years to, to actually probably start seeing uh, some utilities moved, some ground being worked up. There is a lot, a lot of wetlands to deal with. Still some property acquisition, but it is coming, I assure you. And then also, um, kind of to my surprise, but uh, to the congratulations of, of many people, Mike Niederhauser included, who's led a, led a uh, fight to get the widening of Interstate 24, basically from Buchanan Road exit 89 to Pelham, um, get that widened, uh, three lanes, uh, for a whole lot of reasons. Number one, the traffic's starting to hit us. We know we're going to be developing major industrial sites here. The Air Force Base is going through some growth. Plus, just due to our, natural, our national defense needs, we need to make sure that interstates are never blocked near this Air Force Base. So, um, it's, I think it's about a $930 million project joint project between the state and the federal government, but there is money in the state project, state budget this year to start that process, and um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, gonna mean a lot for us long term. Sorry guys, that was one of those uh, uh, edit times I talked about wouldn't happen often, but it did. We got um, interrupted, somebody had something important, took care of it, but uh, we were uh, beginning to talk about the uh, Animal Control Center was the next thing I wanted to mention. We still have a little bit of due diligence going on with one of the three properties we're looking at, but I think it will be done within about five to six weeks. It basically includes a survey and another commercial appraisal, uh, and we have an individual that wants to then donate a, a portion of land for an animal control facility. Um, so we want to get all the paperwork in order and all of our uh, surveys, appraisals, et cetera, in order, make sure that the improvements that we might have to make to the land would be worth it in a donation uh, scenario. And we still need to make sure that once all this information is presented to the current landowner, that they still want to move forward with the process. But I think everything looks good now for us to, to move forward. And uh, we already have $500,000 in reserve that we set aside to build an animal shelter. We have an anonymous donor um, who I've talked to many times that has 
uh, promised another five hundred thousand uh, dollars wants to do a dollar for dollar match from out in the community so i put together steering to in to in, enable that situation uh, i built a steering committee and uh, we built a 501c3 the steering committee did and it's registered with the state and the federal government it's called coffee, coffee county cares for animals and the steering committee is standing up an entire board of directors who will meet uh, have their first quasi meeting on february 15th of this month um, this board of directors will hire a uh, executive director and a fundraiser or just a fundraiser maybe for the first couple of years to come up with a coordinated program to raise 500,000 to draw down that full 500. That gives us a million five for our initial build of our animal control facility plus some other monies I know the, the commission is going to help with and some other donations that will also come in afterwards. My intention is for the board to continue after that and to continue to raise money for capital improvements for the shelter so we can add additional services. The bo bottom line is, yes, I'm an animal lover. Um, yes, people are more important. I know that, of course. But if your animal, your pet, disappears from your house and you can't find it, um, I want you to know that if it falls into the hands of our animal control facility, it's going to be safe. It's not going to be, there's not going to be just going straight to euthanasia. That we're not going to ship them off uh, to some northern state. There will be protocols on how to deal with these things and give you the proper time to, to retrieve your animal. And we will treat uh, all animals humanely there. And we're going to push this process down the road and get it done. It's been, can's been kicked down the road seven or eight years. Uh, we're going to get it done this year, uh, a long way down this year. Uh, working with other cities, it's been great. Uh, Manchester and Coffee County have partnered up on some grants to help them build their sewer, uh, rebuild parts of their sewer plant. Uh, we have the Exit 105 Joint Committee that we've built. Um, our next meeting, I believe, is October 1st. You can check on the county's website, coffeecounty.org, to see exactly when it is. I may have told you wrong, but um, it's going to be held in Manchester City Hall. I encourage you to come. It's going to talk about um, widening and adding. Uh, uh, sewer, sewer utilities out to the 105 exit and some some there'll be some peripheral things that go on also with those conversations obviously and Tullahoma and uh, Coffee County have been getting along great Mayor Nose and I have known each other for a long long time and uh, we've been to several events together and he has been here to help me present some awards to some citizens and and we're all talking and, and I'm really enjoying it and uh, I enjoy the honor of being able to be your mayor and I look forward to more of these uh, podcasts, more, uh, you know, briefing you on the health of our great county, um, working through any challenges with you. And uh, eventually in some of these episodes, I want you to meet our department heads. I want you to meet some of our, our employees that are going above and beyond the call of duty to do things. I want to show you some of the inner workings of of the committee process and how things work. These are were always things that fascinated me in politics and love to show them to you a few minutes at a time in this episode. But we're going to cut it off for now. Um, and uh, you can reach me at mayor at coffeecountytn.org and that's all spelled out coffee county and then tn.org mayor at coffeecountytn.org phone number up here is 931-723-5100 and either sam harper my chief of staff or constance um, who is really kind of the real mayor will answer the phone and uh, thank you for listening and for watching and we'll see you next week